all right so we have completed alkane okay let's recap what we learned in the previous lesson on alkane before we move on so alkane belongs to one of the homologous series and those they are in the same homologous series they share the same general formula similar chemical properties and as we go down the group okay they become bigger and bigger and that is why their physical properties such as boiling point melting point will increase okay so for alkane okay they are a series of saturated hydrocarbon saturated means they only have cc single bond okay so it means that each carbon is bonded to or rather bond up to four atoms so it has a maximum number of atoms which is four okay so for alkane the general formula is cn h2n okay so we've completed this two and then encounter methane all the way to butane okay so we have our meth s prop and but Okay, so we fill in the name A N E A N E A N E A N E. So methane one carbon, ethane two, three four. C H four, C two H six, C three H eight, C four H ten. So when we go down the series is plus C H two plus CH2 plus CH2 okay so this is what we call molecular formula molecular formula okay so in our syllabus we will also need to take a look at okay structural formula so structural formula or rather another word for it is full structural formula this split formula means that we need to draw out all the bonds okay to show them okay then we also learn about isomerism okay so isomerism or isomers they have the they have the same what but different okay so they have the same molecular formula but different structural formula okay so for example i have my pentane here this is straight chain and then i have my branch chain where one of the carbon okay i shift it to the center so this is what we call a branch chain but the molecular formula is the same except for the structural formula okay so for alkane they are generally unreactive and they only undergo two reactions okay they only undergo two reactions one of them will be combustion and the other one will be called substitution all right so for combustion must be oxygen and produce only CO2 and H2O. Yes. Whereas substitution will be by a halogen, can be chlorine, can be bromine, as long as it's in group 7 halogen. Okay, and it must have UV lights. No UV light, the reaction will not occur because they are just so unreactive. Okay, because they are very saturated already bonded to maximum four atoms so it's very hard for them to break and then uh, substitute with another one okay so this substitution reaction occurs one at a time so you replace one atom per reaction okay so they will form a mixture of products all right so one example will be my methane i react with cl2 with UV, okay, 
be one of my h will be replaced okay one of my h will be replaced and then i will form hcl okay so they are replacing each other so this is substitution reaction by halogen okay so these are all we learned for alkane moving on to alkene okay so for alkane you can see that we have quite a number of learning objectives but more or less the same we are always looking at the homologous series we will always look at general formula Okay, we will also draw branch and unbranch, okay, the isomers. Okay, and then okay, they have more reactions here. Okay, we should take a look at it one by one. So not to worry. Okay. So before that, let's take a look. Okay. So alkene is another group of organic compound. Okay, so in fact, many plants and fruits. They will produce alkene. So, for example, orange and lemon, they get their characteristic smell from an alkene called limonene. Okay, so I show you this diagram here on the right. You can see that alkene is this, but alkene is this. So, what does it mean? Alkene is CC single bond, but alkene is CC. Double bond. Okay, so you can see this, uh, how to differentiate. How I remember is, okay, I see 2E here. 2E means double. I only see 1E here. So 1E means single bond. So this is how I differentiate. Okay, so let's take a look at your notes, page 6. Okay, how do we draw the different alkene? So refer to your notes here, this page. All right. So, likewise, we will draw the different compounds. We have the name, we have the number of carbon atoms, so on and so forth. Okay, similarly, I like this part here, carbon, carbon, double bond. Okay, so they are CC double bond, and we call them unsaturated. Okay, so... Why are they unsaturated? We'll take a look at it once we draw the structural formula. So because it must have a CC double bond, okay, it must have a CC double bond, I will need two of them because I cannot be forming a double bond with one carbon. There's no way I can form double bond like that. No way. Okay, so my N will start from two, three, four and onwards okay so now i have a cc double bond always draw the cc bond first okay so we recall carbon is in group four four valence electrons four bonds so my this carbon this carbon already has two bonds so i can only form one more at the top, one more at the bottom. I will form one more at the top, one more at the bottom. Okay, now there are two ways to draw. You can either draw like what I've done here, or you can draw something like this. At the top, at the side. At the top, at the side. Okay, now each drawing has their own advantage which you will see later on when we look at the reactions. So if this is the structural formula, the molecular formula will be C2 H4. Okay. So moving on, the next number will be 3. I know that this alkene, the suffix is E and E. And we learn in alkene, after F is P-R-O-P. Propene. So now I will draw three carbon and I have a CC double bond. So when we talk about alkene for now, uh, for now we only look at one CC bond first. Okay, we are only looking at one first. Okay. So this particular carbon 
on the most right one already has two bonds. So I draw one on the right, the third bond, and the fourth. I draw one on the top here because this carbon in the center already has three bonds to the carbon. I left one last one. Then on my left side, I will have another three more because I have one here, two, three, four. I fill in the hydrogen. So the molecular formula is C3. H6. Okay. So after propane, I have four. Same thing, E and E. And then the one with four carbon, the prefix is U, butene. Similarly, I will draw four carbon atom and only one double bond. So I will draw the remaining hydrogen, one at the top, one here. This carbon here already has one, two, three. So I will draw the last one, four. This carbon only has two used up. I still can draw two more. And the one on the left, I only have one used here. So I draw second, third, and fourth. Okay. So this is C4. H8. Okay, some of you might be wondering, okay, this double bond, okay, can I draw in the center? Must it always be the side? For now, yes. We always draw at the side. It can be right side or left side, but we always draw at the side. Okay, so CC double bond is at the most left or most right for now. Okay, we don't complicate things first, but, but, but this one, uh, okay, your butene, the one in the center like that is also an alkene. It's also an alkene, just that it's called butene, which will get a bit confusing, but we are not looking at this for now. We're just looking at alkene, what is the homologous series, and what functional group do they have. This is our alkene homologous series. Okay. Functional group is CC double bond. So this is your functional group. Now if you take a look at this, right, you will notice something about the molecular formula, right? There is a pattern, right? Okay, page six of your notes, there's a pattern. Same thing from here to here. Ethene to propene plus CH2. From propene to butene plus CH2. So it brings me back to the point, homologous series, homologous series they differ by each other by CH2 unit. Okay? So homologous series differ by each other because of the CH2. And then the general formula, this is CN, H will be 2 N. So this is my general formula, okay? which means if I have a C10 alkene, my number of hydrogen will be C10H20P or C14H20P. Okay? So this is my formula the series for alkene. Moving on, we'll take a look at the physical property. So for alkene, let's take a look at the physical properties. They are all gases. Okay, so from here we can conclude low melting and boiling. This is similar to alkane. Okay, when I say they are all gases, uh, we are only talking about from the methane all the way to butane. Okay, or ethene. All the way to butene. Okay, so it's only until butyl group, or rather four carbon atoms. Okay, similarly, boiling point, melting point will increase. Okay, molecular size increase. Same as your alkane. They are all organic molecules. They all have weak intermolecular forces of attraction between molecules. Okay. So the functional group for alkene is CC double bond. 
whereas for alkane, okay, it's CC single bond. Okay, so we call this unsaturated hydrocarbon. Why unsaturated? Because uh, you take a look at this. So what is the name of this molecule? I hope you get it right. It's e thin. What about this molecule here with double bond, CC double bond? This is e thin. All right. So you can see this carbon. Uh, I'm bonded to maximum one, two, three, four atoms. Whereas for my alkene, this carbon bonded to only one, two, three atoms. This one, four atoms. Max. I cannot be adding a fifth atom. There is no such thing. So this is what we call saturated. And this is what we call unsaturated because I can increase this three to four by breaking the bonds. I can break this and then add one more atom here, which we will look at it later. Okay, so that is why this is called unsaturated, only three or two, but this one already bonded to max four. Okay, so this is what we call saturated versus unsaturated. So after finishing physical properties of alkene, and the properties, the trend in the properties follow the same as alkane. Okay, we're going to move on to chemical properties. Okay, so chemical properties, we are looking at the reactions, the chemical reactions that they will go through. First of all, will be combustion. Okay, all organic compounds, they can be burned. Okay, and they can react with oxygen. Okay, in the air. And they will burn to produce only carbon dioxide and water. So similarly, the water produced is in gaseous state. However, if I want to compare alkene versus alkane, alkene will produce more soot. And this is what we call incomplete combustion. So um, why is that so? Let's take a look. I will compare C to H4 versus C to H6. Okay, so both contain two carbon atoms. So the one on the left, we call them ethene. Okay, because this has a formula of CN, H2N. Then the one on the right, we call them ethene. Okay, so this is CN, H2N plus 2. Okay, so if I want to compare these two, I will need to calculate the percentage of carbon. Because the carbon will need to undergo reaction with oxygen to produce CO2. So if I have a lot of carbon, I will need a lot of oxygen to undergo complete combustion. Okay, which means it's harder. Because it's harder to get excess oxygen. So if I count the MR of this, this is 2 times 12 plus 4. So it's 28. Okay. Then the MR for ethane is 2 times 12, 24 plus 6, which is 30. So if I count the percentage of carbon, so 24 over 30 times 100%, okay, I will get 80%. Okay. For this, 24 over 28 times 100%, okay. So for this, if I count the percentage of carbon, this will be 85.7%. Okay, so if I want to compare the same number of carbon atoms, all right, ethene will have a higher percentage of carbon means more oxygen needed. Okay, so if I need more oxygen means it's harder to undergo complete combustion. So the flame will be sootier. Okay, it will be... Uh, it will have the orange flame or the dark uh, black smoke coming out. Okay. So other than combustion, another reaction that alkene can undergo is called addition reaction. Okay. So let's take a look at what is addition reaction. But before that, we will 
recap what we learned under alkane. So alkane undergoes substitution reaction. So let's take a look. Okay, so this is my ethane molecule where I have two carbon atoms, six hydrogen atoms. Okay, so C2H6. So for substitution reaction, they react with chlorine and it must have UV light for this reaction to undergo. Okay, so one of the chlorine will substitute the hydrogen. So in this case, I started off with two reagents and then I will end off with two reagents. So one of the hydrogen is replaced by chlorine. Okay, so I started off with two and then I end off with two. So this is for substitution reaction. Whereas for alkene, they have CC double bond. They are unsaturated. Okay, so unsaturated meaning this carbon is only bonded to three. Whereas for this, this is saturated because this carbon is bonded to a maximum of one, two, three, four. That's the max number of atoms that it can bond with. This is unsaturated because it is currently bonding to three atoms. So I can add one more. So this is what we call addition reaction. So what will happen is that the double bond will be broken. Okay. So when it's broken, it will become like this. Okay, the double bond is broken to form CC single bond. And then one of them will be added to one carbon. So the Y is added to one carbon. And the other one, the X, is also added to another carbon. So this is unsaturated CC double bond. In this case, this is saturated CC single bond. This addition, because I started off with two reagents, and now I only end off with one reagent. So this is what we call addition reaction. So to compare again, substitution reaction is where one atom is being replaced. For addition, the bonds are broken, and then two atoms are added into the molecule. Okay, so you can see it this way. For example, this is Shani. This is Shannon. Okay? They are holding hands. Okay? So what is happening inside this addition reaction is that one of their hands is broken. So now, Shani has one free hand. Okay? Then, same as Shannon. Shannon also has one free hand. So this free hand, they can add one X. They can add one Y. So this is what we call CC double bond addition reaction. Okay, become CC single bond. So unsaturated become saturated. Okay. Now another thing I want you all to take note for this addition reaction. For addition reaction, X and Y that are added are always to adjacent carbon. Okay. What do I mean by this? I'm going to give you another example. Okay. Three carbon. CC double bond. So this is, the name of this is propene. Okay. So I'm going to add X and Y. So in this case, my double bond will be broken. So once it's broken, it will form something like this. Okay, so my X will go here, my Y will go here. So if you notice, they are adjacent. Okay, or another scenario, another scenario will be like this. Okay, my double bond is broken. I can have my Y here, I can have my X here. Okay, 
but they are still adjacent. So if you notice, if you notice, initially x is in the center. Now my y is in the center. Okay, this molecule and this molecule, okay, they are, okay, these two molecules, they are isomers. I have C3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 H, 1 X, 1 Y. Molecular formula is the same, but structural formula is different, okay? Because now my Y is in the center. Just now my X was in the center, now my Y is in the center. So these two are called isomers, okay? Last one. One more example will be like this. I break the double bond. I can never form this. My X and Y can never be separated. Okay? Because if you notice here, this double bond is broken. It is this carbon and this carbon, they have one free space. Okay, so I cannot anyhow shift this free space. So one more point is addition reaction, X and Y must always be together. They cannot be separated. However, there is no fixed order. So my Y can be in the center or my X can be in the center. So this is what we call addition reaction. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. So for addition reaction is where the CC double bond is broken. Okay, so inside your notes, please write down CC double bond. Okay, so they are broken to form saturated organic compound with only CC single bond. So they are total of four reactions. Hydrogenation, adding of hydrogen. Bromination, adding of Br2. Hydration, adding of H2O. Polymerization means I add many of the alkenes together to form one long chain. Okay, so this is the general equation. CC double bond. The double bond is broken. Okay, so I have one free space here, one free space here. Okay, so one Y can go to here, one X can bond to, bond to here. Okay, it can also be, okay. My Y can be on the left side, X can be on the right side, does not matter. Okay, so the first one is addition of hydrogenation. Conditions must take note, 200 degrees Celsius and nickel catalyst. So this nickel is a transition metal. Okay, transition metal can act as catalyst. Okay, so conditions right on the top of the arrow must know, okay, so in this case, ethane react with hydrogen and I'll form ethane. Okay, so the next reaction will be addition of bromine, bromination. And this bromine is in aqueous state. Okay, so addition of bromine solution. Please add the word solution. Okay. So before I show you the video, okay, I want you to ask yourself this. What is the initial color of bromine solution. Recall your periodic table. What is the color of bromine solution? So that is the initial color. Initial color of bromine is reddish brown. Okay, so I'm going to add reddish brown solution into ethene. So ask yourself, bromine solution is reddish brown. What will happen if I would add into ethene? Okay, I'm going to show you this video with two test tubes, okay, one contains alkane, one contains alkene. Alkane can react with halogen called substitution reaction. But substitution reaction can only occur under UV. So in this reaction, there is no UV. Okay. The tube on the left contains the saturated hydrocarbon cyclohexane. The tube on the right contains the unsaturated hydrocarbon cyclohexene. First, um, is added drop by drop of tan tube. 
containing saturated hydrocarbon. As the bromine is added, it dissolves in the site. The color of the solution, Double bond. solution is stirred because bromine does not react with saturated hydrocarbon. Now, liquid bromine is added to the unsaturated hydrocarbon cyclohexene. Brown color disappears as the bromine mixes with the cyclohexene. This has the, bro the bromine reacts with cyclohexene, adding to the double bond. This reaction is a very convenient test for the presence of a double bond in a molecule. So, you watched the video already, the one on the left. Reddish brown solution remains. Okay, no reaction, bromine is still present. Whereas on the right, for CC double bond unsaturated, reddish brown bromine turns colorless because the bromine reacted away already. Okay, so this is an addition reaction. Okay, you don't need any high temperature, you don't need any catalyst, it will just react. Okay, so for this, the double bond is broken. You add bromine into each one bromine atom into each carbon, and they must be side by side. Okay, they must be side by side. There can never be this kind of reaction where you have two bromine on the same carbon. This it will not happen. Okay, so when this bond is broken, double bond is broken, I have one vacancy for each carbon. Okay. So the bromine must be added to each carbon. Okay. So aqueous bromine is used. Take note of the word aqueous must be bromine solution. Okay. It is a very simple to test to distinguish between alkane and alkene, as you have seen just now in the video. The next reaction is hydration. Okay, we are adding water, and this reaction is undergoing at high temperature. So when it's at 300 degrees Celsius, it is not H2O water, but H2O gas. Okay, you need a pressure of 60 atmospheric pressure. And then the catalyst here is phosphoric acid. Okay, take note of this condition. It's very important. So same thing, my water is H2O. Okay, what will happen is that the double bond is broken. Okay, I will have one H and one OH. One of the H will go to one carbon, then the other OH will go to the other carbon. So conditions-wise, take note of how to write. Okay, temperature, pressure at the top, catalyst at the bottom. Okay, and also underline this gas. Okay, I'm going to show you one more example. What happens if I have, have three or more carbon atoms? Okay, so let's take a look. So I have... This molecule here called propene because I have three carbon. All right, so I'm going to add water. Okay, in this reaction, it's 300 degrees Celsius, 60 atmospheric pressure, and phosphoric acid. Okay, so now my double bond will be broken. Okay, I will have this molecule here. The double bond is broken which means I have this. So likewise, I can have my H here and then my OH here. Or, okay, this is the first example. The second one is I can also have my H at the side and now my OH in the center. Okay, so I have example one molecule here and then the second molecule here. Okay, so either way, they are both correct. If the question asks you to draw the structural formula, okay, they ask you to draw the structural formula, you draw everything, including all the bonds between the OH as well. Okay, these two are isomers. They are isomers of each other. So if you notice, this is first carbon, second carbon, third carbon. My OH is bonded to my first carbon. For this case, okay, I have my first carbon, second carbon and third carbon. My OH now is bonded to the second carbon. So the structural formula, they are different. But molecular formula will be the same. Okay? And 
all the double bonds, they will be broken to form single bond. So unsaturated to saturated. Okay, so this is what we call addition polymerization. Okay, so write this down inside your notes. Okay, because the ones inside your notes are all in two carbon atoms. Okay, so either way, they are both the same. But in this case, I give you an example of three carbon atoms. So you can see that isomers can be formed. Okay, so we have gone through adding of hydrogen. That's number one. Hydrogenation. Number two, bromination. Okay, number three, hydration. Adding of steam. And the last one is called addition polymerization. So let's take a look at this picture here. Okay, so actually it's a video. Okay, basically, um, in this video, in this video, they are trying to figure out how much water can diapers hold. So you can see that this diaper is very bloated. They added about close to one liter of water. All right. So the question is, what is exactly inside this diaper that allows it to absorb so much water? Okay. So the secret ingredient that's inside the diaper is polymer. Okay. So polymer is the, the, the term called poly means many. So like polytechnic. Polytechnic means the school has many different causes. Okay, so poly means many. So polymerization is where all the monomers join together to form one long chain. So um, temperature will be 200 degrees Celsius. Pressure will be 1000 atmospheric pressure and a catalyst. Um, don't need to know what's the catalyst. Okay, so monomer. Okay, monomer means one unit. For example, okay, one Lego piece. This is a monomer. So I do many Lego pieces. To form a polymer. So that is what we call monomer polymer. So first of all, let's take a look at the simple one which is called polyethane. Okay, so when at high temperature and pressure with catalyst, all the monomers, if I put them into one pot together, they can react and form one long chain. Okay, so polyethane is a commonly used plastic. You can see in your below your bottles, there's PET, this symbol called poly. Ethane, okay. So let's see. First of all, I have my monomer. So all my ethane. Okay. So how I draw hydrogen atoms at the top and the bottom. So it's easier. It's neater. It's neater. Okay. So during addition reaction, what is being broken? During addition reaction, what is being broken? Okay. CC double bond is being broken. So let's see. Okay, I have my monomer here, ethane molecule. So what I usually will do is I will draw it up and down, meaning my hydrogen will be at the top and bottom. Okay, so each one of them is a monomer. So in this case, my monomer is ethane. Okay, this is my monomer. So addition reaction means the double bond is broken, right? So now the double bond is broken. Okay. So when the double bond is broken, they form single bond. Okay. So remember, okay, um, the example that I gave you where I have Shaney and Shannon, then they have two hands holding here, right? So when one of the hands are separated, okay, so when one of the hands are separated, each of them has one free hand. Okay, this is free hand. Free hand. So likewise, same for my monomer. I break the bond already. This one has one free hand. This one has one free hand. This one has one free hand, one free hand. This one also one free hand, one free hand. So how do they join together? This one will join to this carbon. This carbon will join to this carbon. And then of course continue. Okay. So I will have this polymer. That is called poly. Poly means many. So what is the monomer that I'm using here? I have many ethene molecule. Okay, so this is a polyethene, which also means many ethene monomer. Okay, so please do not write this. 
please do not say, oh, Miss B, here all CC Singapore. So it should be poly ethane. This is not correct. Okay, because we are not using ethane as the monomer. We are using ethene as the monomer. Okay, so please take note of how you write. And this is a continuous chain. So you ask yourself, okay, it's a covalent molecule. Is this a simple covalent molecule or giant? You ask yourself, this is a continuous. Okay, so this is a giant. Okay, this is a giant covalent molecule. Okay, long chain. Okay, so this is many, many monomers called ethene joining themselves together. So now you see why I draw my hydrogen at the top and bottom. Okay, if I draw it like that, it will be very difficult for me to join them. Okay, if I have to draw it like this, it's very difficult. Okay, so in this case, we are learning from monomer to polymer. What if, what if I give you a polymer? Then I ask you, hey, deduce the structural formula of the monomer. That means I work backwards. Okay, so what you do is you find the pattern. Okay, you find the pattern. So in this case, I notice that the pattern is like this. Minimum must be two carbon because you need a CC double bond. So in this case, the repeating pattern is like that. So when I notice that the repeating pattern is like this, okay, so I draw my repeating pattern like this. Okay, what I will do is I will remove away this, remove away this. Okay, so I will form something like this. And then I will join back the CC double bond. So this is my before. Okay, so sometimes the question can ask you to work backwards. So this is your polyethane, many ethane molecules coming together. Okay, and the repeat unit means one unit. This is how you write your answer. Okay, actually just choose one will do. Bracket means this whole thing is one learning. Okay, so this is the repeat unit. Monomer, if the question is to write monomer, this is the monomer. Okay, repeat unit. Repeat unit is not the same as monomer. Monomer means what is the building block? What is the building block? Okay, so the building block for this is ethane molecule. So take note, when the question asks for repeat unit, you draw this. When the question asks you to draw monomer, uh, then you give me the correct monomer, which is ethane. Okay, so take note of the difference between repeat unit and monomer. So the structural formula of polyethane, okay, when it asks for polyethane, what is the structure of polymer? It means that I have, this is one repeat unit. Uh. However, when it asks for polymer, formula polymer, you must, you must at this end. It means that this repeat unit repeated n times. Okay, so structural formula is this repeat unit repeated n times and you must have the bracket. You must have the bracket. Okay, you are telling me inside this bracket is the repeat unit and the polymer means times, n times of it. n can be 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way. Okay, so I think you all just remember one will do. Okay, so let's take a look at question on page 9. Okay, so they tell you that there is a polymer, okay, and this is part of the polymer. Okay, so they ask you to draw monomer, okay, what is the building block? So you take a look at this, and first thing you need to see the pattern. So I notice that this is HCCL, this is HCCL, H and CL, bottom also HCL, HCL. So I realize this is the pattern, okay? So the repeat unit is this. This is the repeat unit, okay? So if this is the repeat unit, the question asks for monomer, right? So I need to draw the monomer. So this is the repeat unit. Identify the repeating unit first. Then I draw monomer, okay? This is the repeat unit already. Okay, what I need to do is I need to form CC double bond, right? Okay, so what I will do here is this must be the one that will be 
join back together. Okay, so this is the monomer. Monomer must have CC double bond. That is the building block. Okay, so many of this monomer will form polymer. Okay, so this is for practice one. Okay, so let's try the next question. Practice two. Write the structural formula of propene. So we will draw, first of all, three carbon atoms. Okay, so this is how we usually draw propene. With three carbon atoms, one CC double bond, and then fill it up with hydrogen atoms. Okay, but since we are going to draw addition polymerization of this propene, it is easier if we shift the hydrogen and the rest to the top and the bottom. What do I mean by this? So, CC double bond. Okay, then I will draw the hydrogen at the top. Then I shift this hydrogen down. Okay, so I shift this hydrogen down here. Okay, then I just copy this hydrogen at the top. And this portion here, I shift it down. Okay, so I shift it down to like this. So it makes it easier to draw the polymer. So part B, they ask for the polymer with three repeating units. Okay, so what do we do is we draw the three monomers first. Okay, so I just repeat the monomer three times. So I draw three times of the CC double bond. Okay, then I draw the hydrogen atoms. Okay, then I copy what I've drawn here three times. Okay, this portion here. Okay, H, C, H3, H, C, H3. So I'm forming polymer here. So during addition polymerization, CC double bond is broken. Okay, so what I do now is I have already drawn three monomers, three propene. Okay, I shift those at the top and bottom already. So what I do now is, of course, I break the CC double bond. So I break the CC double bond. It will become CC single bond. Okay. So once I form the CC single bond, then each carbon, each carbon now has one more bond that they can form. Because if you see now currently, this carbon atom here only got one, two, three. Okay, this carbon only got one, two, three. So all carbons now, they can form one more bond. Okay, so this carbon will have one extra bond, which is the fourth bond. Same for this C and this C connected. This C and this C connected is the fourth bond. And don't forget this last C here. Okay, so this is the polymer with three repeating units. How do I see that there are three repeating units? Okay, you take a look. Okay, I have one pattern here. The second one is repeated here. And the third one. So this is my polymer. Okay, so if the question asks, what is the repeating unit or repeat unit? Okay, you draw this. Okay, so this is just one repeat unit. Okay, and then the monomer will be this. Monomer will always have the double bond. So this is the monomer propene. This is the repeat unit. Okay, name the polymer form because I'm forming with many ethene. Uh, because I'm mo forming with many propene as a monomer, so it's called polypropene. Okay, so if the question asks for the structure of the polymer, this is my structure of the polymer. Okay, formula. Okay, so this is what we call addition polymerization. Okay, we have the formula of the polymer on the right. In the center, we have this monomer, formula of the monomer. And then we have this, which is the formula of the repeat unit. So three different versions. Okay, we cannot use them interchangeably. They are all representing different things. Okay, the next part we will look at will be fats and oil. So fats and oil, they are actually an example of a polymer, meaning they contain long chain of hydrocarbons. So what's the difference between fats and oil? When we think about oil, we will say, oh, it's fattening, it contains fats. Okay, so they do have similar properties. Okay, they do have similar chemical properties, but they are also slightly different. Okay, so fats are mostly um, solid. Okay, margarine, butter, these are fats. Whereas for oil, they are your cooking oil, olive oil, corn oil, all, all of them are liquid state. So fats have higher melting point, meaning they make 
they require a higher temperature for them to exist as a liquid. So that is why usually your butter and margarine, they are solid state and then vegetable oil, they are liquid state. Okay. So oil, they have a higher proportion of unsaturated, meaning they have more CC double bond. Okay. So that is why low melting point. All right. So we will take a look at why is that so. Okay. They are long chain. They contain many carbon carbon um, single bond and double bond. Okay. Oil, they have double bond. For fats, they have more CC single bond. So vegetable oil, okay, we are looking at oil, uh, they have more carbon carbon double bond. So if they have many, many carbon carbon double bond, we call them polyunsaturated. So what's the difference between fats and oil? Okay, um, of course, it's recommended to consume um, oil instead of fats. So there are this thing called healthy fats, unhealthy fats. Okay, so polyunsaturated fats are called your healthy fats. Okay, and where are they usually found? Of course, they are found usually in um, fish, omega, uh, omega, okay, your dairy products, your nuts, all of them, okay, they, are, they contain polyunsaturated fats. And polyunsaturated fats are called healthy fats. Okay, they are said to improve your brain health. That's why they say eat more fish, they eat more salmon, they have a lot of omega. Okay, and of course, they reduce unhealthy fats inside your body. So if you take a look at this example here, separated means I only have CC single bond, whereas unsaturated have CC double bond. So if you compare, saturated, they are straight chain. Okay, so they are straight chain. If you can see here, they have higher surface area. Whereas for unsaturated, they have like kinks. So kinks means like bends in this chain. Okay, so the surface area is smaller because it's bent. Ma. Okay, compared to one that's longer chain, the, the, the surface area in contact is more. Whereas for polyunsaturated, the surface area is lesser. The forces of attraction, the intermolecular will be lower. Okay, lower intermolecular forces of attraction. So lower melting point, boiling point. So that's why polyunsaturated is liquid state. Saturated fats are usually in solid state. So if you can see from this picture here, see this one got more surface area, higher. Whereas this one is like a bent shape. Okay, for, for the two to come together, the surface area is not that high compared to straight chain. Okay, so that is why unsaturated lower melting point. Okay, so this is just an infographic about between saturated fats and unsaturated fats. Okay, so that's why they say olive oil is good. So use olive oil to do your cooking. That's why, you know, pasta, they have a lot of olive oil. Okay, because they are considered healthy fats. In fact, in fact, they can help to lower down um, your unhealthy fats. Okay, so there are two types of cholesterol. This is just for your information. We have bad cholesterol and good cholesterol. Okay, you can talk to your parents and ask them when they do their health checkup, right? Um, ask them about the cholesterol level. There usually will be two types. One is bad cholesterol and one is good cholesterol. So it's called LDL, low density. Then the good one is called high density. So how do we produce butter or margarine? We use um, hydrogenation. This is an industrial application. So what you do is you have your CC double bond from your unsaturated vegetable oil. So what they do is they just add hydrogen, 200 degrees Celsius, nickel catalyst, then they form your margarine. This is your fats. Okay, so now we see the difference between fats and oil. Okay, so next page of your notes. Okay, how do we form alkenes? Okay, we form it by this process called cracking. So cracking, as the name suggests, is to break. Okay, so what happens during cracking is that petroleum fractions they are usually alkane so we use this um, nafta fraction okay to break them into shorter chain okay so long chain hydrocarbon break into smaller chain so why is that so is because shorter chain they are more flammable okay more flammable higher in demand so we use high temperature to crack about 600 degrees celsius we use um, catalysts such as aluminium oxide and silicon dioxide in another words is your sand Okay, do we need to remember the conditions? Yes. So during this cracking process, the long chain alkane, they can break into shorter chain. So it can be a mixture 
between alkane and alkene. Then sometimes hydrogen gas will also be produced. So this is one way of producing your source of hydrogen, which we learn in Harbour process. So during the cracking of petroleum, we just um, have this simple setup. Of course, this is just in lab, okay, with um, this catalyst here. Okay, and then I have my cotton wool or whatever wool that's here that's soaked in liquid petroleum. So this is long chain. Okay, then I will heat it up. So when I heat up, I will break this long chain into shorter chain. Sometimes it can also have hydrogen. So at this part here, 600 degrees Celsius. Okay, so why is it important? It's because we want to meet the demand for petrol, which is your second fraction. And uh, most of the time, we don't really use as much um, bitumen or lubricating oil. We require more of petrols okay, because of the motor cars. Okay, and long chain, they are very unreactive. They are not very flammable. And right now here, not very flammable. Okay, so if the question asks why is cracking important, it's because we want to meet the high demand of petrol that is very uh, flammable. Okay, it's insufficient. That's why we the demand for it is higher. So that's why we need to do cracking. Okay, to meet the high demand because it's very flammable. Okay, so when we talk about cracking, okay, just take note, the number of atoms here must always balance with the one on the left side. Basically, you balance your equation. The left and right side both must balance. So left side got 18 carbons. Right side also should have 18 carbon atoms. Okay, so cracking got three functions. One of them is to produce petrol, okay, which is high in demand. Okay. Secondly, is to form alkene, which is more reactive. So the one inside your petroleum is mainly alkane. Take note, they are mainly alkane. They are CC single bond. That's why they are very unreactive, saturated. Okay, last point is to produce hydrogen to make harmonia in harbour process. Last part of alkene is, of course, isomerism. Recall the definition of isomers. Okay, same molecular formula different structural formula okay they have different melting point and boiling point and of course the branch chain they will also have different in fact the branch chain have lower melting point and boiling point as compared to straight chain okay because this one has lower surface area this one has higher surface area so first two members of alkene they do not have isomers for example, you see ethene. Ethene looks like this. Okay, so there is only two carbon. There is only one way to put the CC double bond. Okay. Okay, for propene, inside your note says it does not have. Okay, I want you all to change your notes. Ah. Cancel away propene. Okay, propene is C3H6. It has a I, it has an isomer. The isomer of propene can be like this. Then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is also C3H6. Okay? But very obvious, right? The structural formula is very different, right? And if you see my carbon atoms, all of them, they have 4 bonds. All of them have 4 bonds. So these two, they are isomers. So inside your notes, it says ethene and propene don't have this cancel away. Cancel away propene. Propene has. These two are isomers. These two have same molecular formula of C3H6, but different structural formula. This is what we call cyclopropane. Cyclo means cyclic. It's a cycle. Propane because it's CC single bond. Okay. These two... They are isomers, even though they have different functional group. Functional group of this one is CC double bond. Functional group of this one is CC single bond. Different homologous series, but they still fulfill the definition of same molecular formula. So they are isomers. So as long as they have same molecular formula, different structural formula, don't care whether it's the same functional group or not. They are isomers. 
Okay, so you need to know the definition of your isomers very well. So beauty, it should be four. Can you change? Okay, now before that, how to see whether it's, it's isomer first? I always look at it as an MRT track. Okay, so one, two, three, four. Okay, I always count from the functional group. Okay, so now same thing. One, count from the functional group first. Uh. Two, three. Then this one is two. Count from the functional group. So this one is one, two, three. This is three. Okay, so always count from the functional group. Then you realize that, okay, this one is one, two, three, four. This is the one here is different from this one, which is one, two, three. Okay, then this one also different because this one is one, two, three, one, two, three. Whereas this one is one, two, three, one, two. This is one, two, three, four. This one is one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Then I have another one, which is. One, two, three. Okay, so they are different. In fact, I have one more. Okay, cyclobutane. Okay, this C4H8, obviously it looks very different from the rest, right? So this is my fourth isomer. Okay, so if you take a look at this diagram here, okay, it looks a bit different from the rest, this one, the one that I just drew. Okay, but actually this and this are the same. Because if I draw from here, one, two, three, four. Okay, it's the same. Okay, so I only have four isomers. So this is isomer four. So please write inside your notes. Okay, structural formula are all different. 